Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to build a power pod for our swappable series. Uh, if you guys haven't already, go ahead and get your materials in order, and we'll go ahead and get started. Our first step for our swappable pod is to uh, simply go ahead and take where we did our 50% score cuts and uh, crack it 180 degrees. Now, if you have any resistance with this, go ahead and you can always take a razor blade and run it down. But what you want to do is simply fold it back 180 degrees, uh, showing the area to be removed on the edge. Now, you can use your fingernail if you have some, and just go ahead and rotate it off. And if you've cut your score cuts deep enough, this will just pop off in one complete piece, just like that. Make sure that your uh, groove is nice and clean of any debris, and go ahead and do the same for the other side. Now that we have the two cavities of foam removed, let's go ahead and test fit and make sure that we can fold up our edges, and then it should actually give you tension right when it meets about the 90 degree mark. If you have your firewall cut out, you can actually use that as a gauge to make sure you're nice and square. Once you're happy with the fit, check the other side. Make sure that it doesn't rock back and forth. If it rocks back and forth, you have some foam down in there that you need to remove, but we're good to go. Our next step is simply to go ahead and take our hot glue gun and then start roughly about a half of an inch in and put a nice bead of hot glue right down the side here. Squeeze over the edge just ever so much, giving you a nice firm glue joint. Now this is an A-style fold, which means that the side cheeks are gonna go over top of the bottom plate. I like to fold it up with this, uh, whatever piece is going to be pushing against the building board so you can put even pressure down against the building board. Gives you a nice square true edge. If you have any excess here that's, that's too much more than you like, you can go ahead and just take a scrap piece of foam and squeegee it off. Once that side's done, we'll go ahead and repeat the process for the next side. Now that we're happy with that, go ahead and check and make sure everything's nice and square. Our next step is to uh, install the firewall onto our power pod itself. Now obviously, once again, we want to check the fit, making sure that the bottom of the firewall is nice and flush with the bottom plates, and the side is flush with the side plates. Um, this is where your barbecue skewers are going to go through, and it's very important that this is nice and securely fastened. And to do that, what we're going to simply do is put a bead of hot glue right down on the surface right here. Now we're going to come back and tape over this with tape. And that's going to be where the real strength comes in, but the glue is very important for a nice secure fit. Now that our firewall is securely fastened to the uh, power pod, we're going to go ahead and reinforce it. And I like to use extreme packing tape, but really any packing tape that you choose is just fine. Uh, but what we want to do first of all is go over top of these guys with some tape. And you can simply do this by cutting, and you don't have to be exact, cutting your packaging tape and simply folding over each relief. These uh, tabs are roughly one inch, but you don't have to, like I said, be spot on. Just get it close. The reason we're doing this is so when we put it into new airframes, we don't fatigue these tabs. Now these tabs are strictly meant for alignment, but it's nice to keep them intact. It'll pop up inside of the uh, airframes very easily uh, without fraying or getting fatigued over time. So it just gives the power pot a little bit more longevity. Now that we have our tabs reinforced, we're gonna go ahead and go around the perimeter with our packaging tape. There we go. Once we get to the end, we can go ahead and just cut that off. Press it down. Then we can go back with our knife or scissors, cut some reliefs, and then fold it under just like you're wrapping a gift. This gives you a lot of durability and also keeps the motor and the firewall from uh, pulling out of the power pot itself. And for this back, I'm just gonna trim this flush. There we are. Our next step is to put a piece of packaging tape from the top of the firewall all the way to the back. And then I like to actually wrap it around and go on the inside uh, for some extra durability and rigidity there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And then run this up against the inside edge just like that. Now we're gonna use some items that we may Velcro in the future on the inside here. This tape is gonna keep you from actually pulling up the paper when you put your Velcro down and say pop off your receiver uh, to connect with different power pods. So that's why we like to go ahead and go around on the inside. We're now ready for electronics. Our next step is to install our uh, motor. Uh, but first, before we do that, we gotta go ahead and clear out the area we just covered up with our tape. So a nice sharp X-Acto knife will do the job just fine. And this is where our wires are gonna pass through, so we're gonna go ahead and clear this area out as well. Our next step is to install our motor mount. Now, if you guys haven't powered a power setup, we do have some recommended power setups in the links below in the description. Go ahead and take our knife and just put a little dot right over our markings for our motor mount. Our next step will be to simply screw on our motor mount with the extra servo screws that we get supplied when we buy our nine gram servos. Now that our motor mount is fastened, we can go ahead and snake the uh, leads from our motor 
through our hole. Now just big enough where you're going to snake one lead at a time. And carefully, you don't want to kink your wires. Bring your motor up to your motor mount. Make sure you're happy with the fit and then go ahead and tighten it down. Our next step is to install our speed control. We're simply going to connect our bullet connectors and when we run up our motor, if it runs backwards, all we need to simply do is switch any two of the bullet connectors to make it run the opposite direction. Before we do a, a run up, it'd be a good idea to remove your prop and simply install a little flap of tape. That way, by any slight chance that you have anything reversed, you don't risk cutting your fingers. Now that we have the uh, electronics hooked up, our next step is to connect our receiver, turn on our transmitter, and connect our battery. There we are. Now we want to make sure, obviously, the motor runs up. In this case, it does. And also that it turns counterclockwise. And we can see that it is indeed turning counterclockwise. And the motor turns the proper direction. We can disconnect everything and move on to our next step. Now we're ready to do the landing gear. This is a 15 inch rod and what we're going to want to do is we're going to put a V-bend right in the middle. I can actually use this building board to go seven and a half inches and we're going to simply bend a little bit past a 45 degree angle. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead and measure two inches and we're going to bend perfectly 90 degrees down from our V. Repeat that process on the other side. Next step is to measure about an inch and a quarter from both sides. So we're going to go about an inch and a quarter bend it half and then an inch and a quarter and bend it again. Now I'm sizing this for our wheels that we include in the kit. If you use different size wheels that are either thinner or longer or you want this landing gear to be longer, you just simply bend less of it on the bottom. Our next step is to simply widen out the landing gear and then bend it so you don't have any toe in or toe out issues and get it nice and horizontal. The next step is to test fit on the airplane. Start from the back, loop it around, just like that. Now you can also zip tie this in if you wish, but I like to leave the rubber bands on it so it gives a nice bungee effect. The next step, we're ready for our wheels. Now we include a, a wheel kit that's very, very easy to put together and also quite durable, even though it's made out of the same foam that we build the airplanes. Now to put your wheel together, just simply take your first wheel, take your coffee stirrer, push it through about an eighth of an inch, and then put a ring of glue around the outer perimeter, not all the way to the edge, just close, and then just really close to the coffee stirrer. And then slide your next wheel down to it. Don't worry about getting it perfectly perpendicular quite yet. You have a little bit of dry time that we can work this out. Now I like to turn these wheels against each other to spread that glue out nice. And if you get close to the edge, you'll be able to just work into the very edge of the wheel and you'll get a remarkably resilient, strong wheel. Repeat the process again. Once again, using a turning motion to spread that glue out the best as possible and then squeeze it together. At this point, you can kind of roll it back and forth making sure that your straw, if your straw wiggles a lot back and forth and you have an issue, you can actually just slide this back. But as long as you keep these outer rims nice and uh, smooth with each other, it should be a perfectly perpendicular hole through the middle. Once it's dry, you can simply take a pair of scissors, trim it about an eighth of an inch from the end, and one wheel's done. Go ahead and repeat the process for your second wheel. So we have our two wheels, we're ready to install them. Now a simple way to put this on, since this whole plane's about simplicity, just slide your wheels on. Just take your hot glue gun and put a little drop right on top of the wire, about an eighth of an inch away. And then I like to just kind of spin around the wire a little bit. Don't be afraid if it's not the prettiest because you can actually just rotate your plane and let it dry. That, believe it or not, will act as a wonderful wheel collar. And the nice thing is if you have to remove your wheel, you just simply pull it off with your nail and you're good to go. We'll go and repeat the process on the other side. The final step is to simply mount where our electronics need to go and also put the Velcro on for our batteries. Now I strongly recommend most of these designs favor having all the electronics stored in this front half of the power pod. Uh, getting back here, things like the FT Flyer and other models will intrude with that area. So what I'd recommend is take your Velcro and mount your speed control and your receiver uh, up front where possible. For the receiver, I'm simply going to put both pieces of Velcro on there. And it's good to have this Velcro on because that way you don't need to worry. You can pull it off of the Velcro, make your connections, stick it back on.
So I'm actually going to move this right here. We'll simply mount that right in the side cheek right here, making sure that nothing goes over top that we don't want. Now, as you can see, we have this battery lead that we need to get down to our battery on the bottom. This would be a good time to make our mark wherever we wish. In the future, we may actually have a reference mark that works on everything, but for right now, we'll go ahead and just make a simple relief cut right here and pass the battery right on through. Since everyone's connectors are different, it's good to size it to whatever connector you want. That's plenty fine there. All right, so our ESC is on, our receiver's on. Our next step will simply be to install the Velcro on the very bottom. Now, depending on your application is where you're gonna to need to put your Velcro. I'd highly recommend you choose one type of Velcro and that you put it on pretty much this full bottom span. Some models you're gonna need Velcro in the back, some models you're gonna need in the front. On this uh, application, I'm gonna go ahead and just simply put it on the front. One nice thing with this rubber band being here, you can simply lift up the rubber band, put it down, and it'll actually hold your battery extra well. Well friends, your power pod is now done. I wanna thank you for watching. The next step to do is to find a swappable that you like and go ahead and build it. If you need any additional information, there's tons of links and tons of information on our website, flighttest.com, or you can check out the forums.